In this video, we're going to solve a subnetting problem. And the problem is how many subnets and hosts per subnet, this is usable hosts by the way, can you get from the network 192.168.92.0/28. And I have my four general steps here. These are the four steps that I'm going to take in order to solve this problem. So this can sometimes be a nice shortcut reminder for you for how I solved it. If you can remember these four steps, you can do this without a whole lot of math. Usually it's just counting. So in this problem, what we need to identify is we need to identify the class of this address, which is based on its first octet, and then we also need to draw out the subnet mask, which is this slash 28. Now, the slash 28 is in CIDR notation. which is a way to represent the subnet mask in the number of ones in the subnet mask rather than using 255, 255, 255. It just is a lot quicker in many ways and it also lets you more easily break away from the classful style of addresses. It's a much shorter way to look at it and if you haven't seen this before get used to it because this is the way we're going to see things in IPv6. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to determine the class of this address, this 192. Now, I have another video that goes into actually all of the math in determining this class, but we'll do kind of a shortcut version of it here. Is it A, B, or C? Well, A is 1 to 127, or, or 0 to 127. Um, B is 128 to 191 and C is 192 to 223. Now these all represent different things. When you turn this number into a binary number, this number will always start with a zero in that eighth bit from the from the right. The one that's worth 128, that eighth bit is always a zero. B always starts with a one zero and C starts with a one one zero. In any case, in order to find these, I've got another video that can show you how I came up with these numbers. Now, we're going to next, since we determined this is a class C, because 192 is right here. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to convert the subnet mask to binary. And in this case, it is a CIDR notation. So I'm going to draw out 28 of the 32 bits as 1s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, still not there yet, 25, 26, 27, 28, and then the rest, the last four, will be zeros. No major math yet. And next thing we need to do is we're going to draw the great divide and the subdivide. Now, what do I mean by the great divide and the subdivide? The great divide is where a classful address would be divided. Okay, If we were a class A address, I'd divide here, a class B address would divide here, and a class C address divides here. It all depends which octets that great divide is going to be between. In this case, we're a class C address, so that's where my great divide is going to go. And then I'm also going to draw in the subdivide. The subdivide represents the part that I've subnetted down to. Notice there's ones on this side of the great divide. That means I've borrowed those four bits and turned them into subnets instead of having them act as hosts. So I'm going to draw a line here. And what we've done here by doing this is we've dissected the subnet mask into three parts. These are the networks. These are the subnets. And these are the hosts networks, subnets, and hosts. Now the question asks us how many subnets and usable hosts per subnet can you get from this network? We now have enough information to solve this problem. We're going to count by the powers of two. Now in order to do this you need to understand that each bit can have two values. Each bit can be a zero or a one. So this bit has two possible values. So do all of these other bits. But once I bring in a second bit, 
and I use all of the combinations of those two bits, I have four possible values when I use two bits. I could do 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1. When I bring in three bits, I have eight combinations. Because now I can do 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. I have eight combinations here. And when I'm talking eight, uh, about three bits, I can actually throw in the leading zeros if it makes a little more sense. And then you can see a pattern forming here. 2, 4, 8. The next number would be 16, as we count by the powers of 2. And we could carry that on out. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. We can keep going. We can keep going to some really big numbers. But what we're seeing here is we can count by these powers of 2. 2, 4, 8, 16. And when we're counting up the possible combinations within the subnets, it's actually that 16 that we're looking for. We need to say, how many combinations can I make out of 4 bits? And the math is actually 2 to the n. 2 to the n. Now, the n represents the number of bits. So 2 to the 4, if you're using a calculator, you can toss 2 to the 4 in there, and you'd get the number 16. But what if you don't have a calculator handy? Just count by the powers of 2. 2, 4, 8, 16. 16 possible subnets in this subnetted network. Now, how about the hosts? The hosts looks like it's going to be the same thing, right? Except when we talk about hosts, and especially if we're talking about usable hosts, hosts that we can use on computers, IP addresses that we can use on computers, now we're talking about excluding two addresses. We can't use a network ID address for a host, and we can't use the broadcast address for a host. So our math is actually 2 to the n minus 2, or 2 to the 4th minus 2, which is actually the same 16, 2, 4, 8, 16. And we take away those two to account for the network ID and the broadcast address. And that equals 14. So I have 16 subnets and 14 hosts. And that is my answer to this problem.